What's up YouTube? Today we're going to go back over one of the older builds that I've done on the DIY uh, Vapor Blaster nozzle. Um, that one was actually quite a popular one. I had lots of questions on it. Uh, people wanting to build their own that were getting a little bit stuck. So we're just going to have a, another run at that one. Um, the last one I just kind of showed you how I put it together, um, but I never really pulled it apart so no one really saw what was inside. The reason I did that was because I had it set up really well, it was working uh, really nicely in the cabinet it was in and I didn't want to disturb that. Um, but now I've got a little bit of time, so I'm just going to go over the components and show you exactly what I've done to build it um, and show you a couple of things that you can mess around with if you've built one and it isn't working very well. Um, the camera setup I'm using today, light's not the greatest, again we've got the fluorescent lights down here and it can cause some pretty big issues with uh, flickering. Uh, just the cameras I'm using, they're just Samsung um, smartphones. So camera's not the greatest, lighting's not the greatest, but I'm gonna do what I can to uh, make it viewable and get the information out there for the people that wanted it. So the first thing I'm gonna cover is the actual body. Um, so anyone who's seen the originals, uh, I'll bring one back in later, um, we'll see that the, the shape in them is pretty close. So there's two types that I've been sort of watching uh, for these builds. I've used a couple of them. This one here is sort of a, a more reputable design. You can tell it's much heavier, it's built better, it's got better casting. But the problem with it is if you see through here, like I mentioned in the last video, there's a divot in here. Now that's to kind of force some of the water up into the strainer before it comes back out the other side. And it just makes sure that it goes through the strainer basket and collects uh, any debris. Um, we're not using the strainer in this, so that doesn't matter. Uh, but the problem, like I said, with that deviation in there means that you can't get as, as good a straight through flow, which is what we're after. Now this one here is a Chinese uh, copy design. It's a lot lighter, there's less material in it. Um, you can tell the casting on it isn't as high quality. But for this task, um, in, in building these, uh, these Vapor Blaster nozzles, this is probably the better one and um, I'd use that as well. But you can see inside there, hopefully that focuses, uh, you can see that you, there's not a straight path right the way through, there's still that deviation in there to direct the water up into the basket. Now I've already removed the strainer basket from this one, and there's a couple of things we have to do to this first. So, as I just showed you, there's a deviation in there that has to be uh, filed out or milled out. Um, and that's to ensure that you can actually fit the rest of the, of the unit together. As you can see, it, it kind of doesn't really fit in, in, in the center there. So you have to be able to machine it to make sure that that fits within the center. Now using these ones that have that straight through casting, rather than the casting that deviates there, is uh, much better. So I'll just throw one out to the side. The other thing that we need to do is this cap here needs to be drilled so that a fitting can go in. Uh, that fitting is just one I've put together recently because I didn't have the brass fitting that size um, and rather than and running out and getting one I thought I'd just throw that together just for the purpose of this demonstration I can replace it later. So that needs to go in there and that's your water inlet. So the first two things that I'm going to do now are to machine that up so there's that straight through path and drill and tap that so that the fitting works. Um, and I'll come back once I've done that and just show you how that fits together and show you what the next step is. Right, so now I've gone and done that. Uh, as you, if you look through that one, I just did that one really rough by file. Um, I had put it in the lathe, but uh, my boring bar setup has got a, a broken tip in it. Um, so not ideal for the video, but that'll give you an idea on what needs to be done. So if I bring that in there now, you can see that there's a lot more movement in there and I can actually get that central um, and that's the essential part. It has to be central within that nozzle um, because that's going to have to line up with your ceramic tip in the end. Uh, so not the greatest but that's, that's going to do the trick. Um, and as you can see there, um, I've got that fitted in. So that's going to be the water inlet. The water's going to come in this side, through this part, mix with the air. The air's going to come in through the air needle and then out through the nozzle. So the next part to set up is the air needle that will go through there. And I like to do it this way uh, because if you've got them threaded, you can wind them in and out a little bit and you can get a little bit of adjustment out of them. And 
if it's not working properly, you can you can try to kind of change uh, how big a tolerance there is in the end there, how big the gap is in the end there to make sure that you get a even distribution of water around it first of all um, for the amount of air that's going to come out and be accelerated through the ceramic tip. Um, so being able to adjust this somehow um, isn't essential but it's ideal because it makes it a lot easier to get them to set up properly and to work properly. So the next step I've got to do is, is drill this out, uh, cut it to length, drill it out, tap one end to go into the back here and the other end I've got a shape, I'll put kind of like a almost like a 45 degree tip on it. Um, doesn't have to be 45 degrees. Just kind of try and match it a little bit to the shape that's on the inside of your nozzle. Um, and I find that seems to work quite well. Um, so I'll go and do that now. Um, the other part to discuss is this bit here. You can use anything. Um, I find it best to use these butylene fittings. Now they've got this aluminium cover on it and then a bit of plastic pipe on there. Usually you put a plastic pipe in and then crimp the aluminium over it and that's your seal for, for your piping. So what I do is I cut the aluminium off, pull the plastic off, and then you're left with something that's a little bit like this. So I'm actually going to use this one seeing, I've, seeing as I've already done it. Um, they don't always look like this. The one I showed you before obviously is a lot longer. Um, but whatever you've got will, will work. And I'll, I'll just use this one for now for demonstration purposes. Um, it'll, it'll be fine. Uh, but if this isn't what you can get, then you can use whatever. You can make these up out of out of something else. If you don't have the brass fittings, um, you can do them. I've seen similar fittings out of Galf. Um, it can be just like a normal hose barb. It doesn't actually have to be one of these butylene style fittings. Um, but for demonstration purposes, again, this will be fine. So there's just one more thing I want to add before I go away and machine up the air needle. Um, the reason I want to do it this way is probably a better order uh, just so you can get your measurements right. So obviously uh, once you've fitted this part in you need to be able to fit the nozzle somehow. Now the easiest way I've found for that uh, if you get some of these fittings. Now these ones usually are made for a, a flared copper tube. So you fit that onto the copper tube, you flare the end, the end fits in here and then that winds on, just kind of like your garden hose fitting, and clamps it into place. Uh, the thread on the back of it is the, the half inch tapered, uh, BSP I think these are, and that will screw onto there. So the reason I want to do this part first is because it's important to get the distance from uh, this, this uh, hose barb on the back, the distance from here to the, the back of the ceramic uh, is important because that's how long your needle's going to be. So before I go and cut that needle, I need to machine this out so that the nozzle fits in. So you see if I can do it that way, it fits in nicely. The back side is just a little bit larger, uh, so I need to just give it a very, very slight um, uh, machine out on the inside there, just so that that fits in snugly. Once that fits in snugly, this part here will go on over top and then hold it nicely in place. Uh, so I'll go and do that now and then I will do the nozzle and before I put it all back together I'll, I'll show you how it all fits together. Uh, so I'll be back in just a moment. So I've got the first of the two things I just spoke about done um, and that's making the ceramic tip fit. Um, so I just had to tickle out a little bit on the inside there just to make sure that that fits in there nice and snug. You hear it click in place. And then we just have this little keeper nut goes in over the top like that. So now that'll screw into the front here, just like that. And it'll probably be very difficult to see through there. Um, but you should be able to see the light if it'll focus. Um, and you want that to be as straight as possible. Um, so it's not 100% perfect, uh, but it's pretty close. Uh, if I had the tools set up properly in the lathe then I would have got a much better job but that's uh, that's going to be good enough for what we need. So now that I can put that together I'll tighten that up a lot more just to make sure it's fit in there snug and where it's supposed to be seated and then I've got to take a measurement from the back here so that essentially will fit in there. I need to take a measurement right the way through down uh, into the back of the ceramic nozzle just to make sure that there's probably, I want to leave about a, a five, four or five mil gap uh, between the end of the air needle, which this will become, 
and the ceramic tip. So we're most of the way there, we just have to do uh, this one last bit here. Um, so I'm going to thread in the back of that. I'll just get my uh, tap and die set out, thread in that, through the end of this. Then I've got to drill a hole most of the way through, probably in a larger size. I'll probably use maybe a, a five mil or a six mil. Um, and I'll go most of the way through and then the last sort of 15 millimeters, a little bit more than half an inch, um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave in a, a smaller size. Now that size is going to change depending on the size of compressor you're using, how fast you want it to, to operate. Um, if you use a smaller size, you'll be able to blast for a longer period of time before your compressor runs dry. Uh, if it's slightly larger, you'll be able to do the job a whole lot quicker. So it just kind of depends on your air supply and whether or not you're the sort of person that's happy to sit there and, and wait for it to fill up before going again, or if you're the sort of person that prefers to just sort of take it at your own pace and just have your compressor running continuously. So that's a personal preference thing. Um, I'm going to go through, take that measurement, and then I'm going to uh, do the machining on this, putting a thread on this end. I'm going to taper the other end so it fits better in the back of the, the ceramic nozzle, the ceramic tip. Um, and then I'll drill a hole most of the way through in about 5mm and then the last I'll probably do in 2.5mm uh, which is usually my starting point. My compressor setups 2.5mm seems to work alright, it's a little bit slow uh, but I'm going to start with that in this setup. If you've got a really small compressor or you're worried about uh, the compressor's ability to keep up then maybe I'd go a little bit smaller, maybe a 2mm hole to begin with. Uh, but I'll go away and I'll, I'll get that machined up now. Right, so uh, here we have all the pieces laid out, um, and I, I suppose this is the bit that most people wanted to see. Uh, a lot of the comments I got on the previous video, uh, when I showed the first one of these, my first video of these, one of the main questions was uh, whether I could pull it apart and show over on, on the inside. So essentially this is exactly the same as the one on the inside, there may be some slight differences as to uh, how the parts uh, have all fit together, um, and, and some tolerances on the middle. Uh, in the middle part there but essentially this is the same as the other one so as you saw before I machined out uh, the front part there to accept the nozzle so that's an easy bit the nozzle just sits in there and the keeper nut goes on top of that um, I won't put that together now because there are a couple other things I want to show first um, so this part there was the the, uh, the brass barb on the back this is where the air comes in the needle will go on the inside of that. As you can see, I've threaded that. It's threaded on the inside there as well. So I can just thread that in nicely like that. That then goes down the inside of the main body there, like this. And I'll thread in like that. And as you can see, I machined a little bit off this, and that's just because the hole on the inside of that isn't as big as the other one that I built. Um, and I noticed before when I had it in the lathe that it was drilled slightly off center So it makes it a little bit more difficult to get right um, If I had my step uh, drill bit set here, I just had it tidy up So I'm not sure exactly where it is at the moment um, But I would have just drilled that out seeing as I didn't do that. I just machined a little bit off the needle there So that'll fit in there like that and You can see that's just sitting through and it's a little bit off center um, it's quite important to have that central, so I may need to mess around with this a little bit to get it to work properly, um, but for the demonstration, it'll, it'll work okay. So then, uh, when this sits right in, and I don't know if you can see in there, uh, but it won't sit right the way. So that nozzle sits through a little bit, hopefully that focuses for you. The nozzle sits through a little bit, but it should leave a gap between the end of the nozzle and that ceramic tip there because you need, need at least some space uh, for the slurry mixture to flow past the end of the nozzle and then be accelerated by the air. Um, so there's, there is in there, I've already measured it. Um, it's about four mils, four or five mils. So that clips in there like that. Keeping up goes over top. Like that. And then last but not least, uh, I'll just show you in there before I put it on, but that's the air needle going through. And then this just screws in like that. And there it is, all completed. Um, 
like I said before, I prefer to use these Chinese style ones. Just to re reiterate again, you can see the difference there. The housing's just a little straighter, so it just works a little bit better. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean to say you have to do it this way. If you want to weld together a, a few nuts with a pipe between them, uh, you can do it that way, I guess. The reason I do it like this is these parts are pretty much uh, available anywhere, and it just makes the job a whole lot easier. Uh, I've been messing around a little bit this afternoon, but um, I still managed to get this together. This there would be a um, just another brass uh, barb fitting like this, but like I said before, I don't have one. This, I think, gives a pretty good rundown of how I built the last one and hopefully fills in a few of the gaps and answers a few of the questions that a few people had. Um, unfortunately, I'm running out of time today, so I won't be able to test it, but I will do another video of it operational. Um, and I will add in anything else I needed to do to get it to work if it doesn't work uh, as it is like that um, If you look down the end there, I haven't touched anything. It could probably do with a little bit of an adjustment, but you should be able to see uh, Right down the center of it. That should be right in the middle of the hole I don't know how the lights working on that. I'll review the footage later uh, But hopefully I've explained well enough that should be centralized because your ears coming right the way through uh, and you want that the water coming in from here, the water in your slurry mixture to have a sort of an even chamber right the way through and then as it's accelerated down the nozzle if the air is in the center of the nozzle correctly then the mixture that's coming in, the slurry mixture that's coming in should mix more evenly and you'll get a, a more even fan at the end. If it's pointed to one side it might swirl out, it might create like a um, some kind of uh, conical effect coming off to the side um, so if you're experiencing any of those, the first thing I'd check is to make sure that um, the line that in which your air is coming through, that, that needle right down the middle, is lined up centrally with the nozzle and the nozzle's not kinked off or anything like that. Um, but as long as the air is coming through, there's a gap between the end of the air needle and the ceramic tip and that it's centralized, then I don't see any reason why yours shouldn't work. Uh, but like I say, when I get a chance, I will put that on one of the machines I'll give it a test and then I'll post that video. So I hope that helps. Uh, feel free to ask any more questions. A few people have been asking, it's quite cool. Uh, I've been linked a few different videos from other people that have built them. Some really cool stuff being put together out there. Um, so yeah, keep it up, grow the community and um, I'm just keen to see a little bit more of the innovation out there. Some really clever people and um, that's probably where I find my most enjoyment. I do enjoy building things, but seeing a community grow and and seeing the innovation out there just gives me more ideas on, on future projects and things I want to do. So yeah, keep it up. Um, also getting close to a thousand subscribers. Uh, in the past I hadn't really wanted to push for subscribers. It was more just uh, documentation of the things that I was doing. But I recently had someone point out to me that if I am pushing and I am putting goals on that, then uh, that's sort of almost forcing me to increase the, uh, the quality of the videos I'm doing, um, maybe spend a little bit more time um, and, and just make sure the quality is better, maybe better sound, uh, maybe improve my camera equipment or something, uh, just to improve the experience on everyone. So I don't know, I have a think about that. I'm close to a thousand, maybe when I get there, I'll, um, I'll have a think about what I want to do, set some goals and then uh, decide what I want to do with all my equipment and maybe setting my workshop up a little bit better for creating better videos uh, but we'll see when we get there uh, thanks for listening uh, like and subscribe and definitely leave us some comments uh, with all your questions cheers